Hey everybody, long time no see. As you can tell by the gray speckled walls behind me, I am at an airport and it is not in Colorado. I thought that this was going to be my Casey Neistat style travel vlog, but instead it's going to be my John Green style contemplative philosophical vlog. In a fairly small circle of people, I am entirely famous for not wanting to grow up and for being the 42 year old who acts like he's 18. I feel like I'm part of an entire generation that really doesn't want to grow up and is just refusing to do so. I suppose you could accuse me of being childish or immature or not taking responsibility for my life, and I do take responsibility for my life, though it's really more of a childlike attitude where you just don't let things get to you, you don't th take things overly seriously, and you know, you get things done, but you don't freak out and stress about it. Now obviously there are some de facto things about which you have to have a grown-up attitude just to get things done and you know I have a mortgage and I have a job and I have a wife and I have things that I have to take care of and I have to get on airplanes once in a while and flights get cancelled and you have to deal with these things and it can be stressful and when those moments happen and I get all clenched up I feel very grown up and I don't like it. And one of those moments of de facto grown-upness is funerals. So sometimes you're forced to do grown-up things, like realize that your no-shave November facial hair is really not appropriate for a funeral, and spend multiple hundreds of dollars that you would much rather have spent on toys and fun things than on flights to a funeral. So I spent the weekend before Thanksgiving, which I had planned to spend snowboarding, flying across the country on very expensive flights. I flew from Denver to Dallas to Indianapolis. I rented a car. I drove from Indianapolis to the tiny little town of Tuscola, Illinois. And there I saw family members who I haven't seen in decades, and some of whom I've never met at all. And we spent hours poring over genealogies and looking at pictures of great-great-grandmothers who were in fact Indian squaws who had been purchased from their chiefs. And telling great stories about recently passed Grandpa Thomas and how he shot 22 squirrels with a slingshot and then had to hide them from the game warden because he was only allowed to have two. But ultimately, when you're looking at pictures of people who've been dead for more than 100 years and you're mourning over the loss of someone who's died in the last few days, you cannot help but think of mortality and how transient and short life really is. And that, of course, is the most grown-up of all thoughts. I think the news of the last few weeks reminds us that there are funerals that are tragic and sad and heartbreaking, but there are also funerals that are not. There are funerals... Like the one I just attended for my grandfather, who was 96 years old and led a very full and productive life. And he told his family many times he was ready to go. I was bequeathed this custom-made curio box that my mother made for my grandfather, and now they're both passed away. So now as I'm heading home and leaning against the gray speckled walls of an airport in a state that I haven't been to in decades, I'm feeling very grown up and I'm not terribly comfortable with it. But the really great thing that I take away from this is my most childlike aspect, and that is my faith because according to the Bible, someday these gray speckled walls and those airplanes and the curio box and all of it will just not be anymore. And instead, all of us will be in an eternal place. Hopefully, heaven. That's where I'm gonna be. I hope you'll be there with me. And all of this won't matter and we won't have to be grown up at all and we'll just spend the rest of eternity being not grown up. And it's gonna be great. See you next time. So one thing that I've noticed, I've been in a lot of airports now, and I've noticed that all of the seating is essentially the same design. There are these pretty uncomfortable slabs with armrests in between the seats, which makes them completely impossible to rest in. Don't the people who design furniture for airports understand that people will get stuck in airports for hours and hours and hours, and might need a more comfortable situation for their seating arrangement? Who, what, what? Ugh, just, just, ugh. Now I get that a lot of airports are very old, but if you're going to design a place where 90% of the population is going to be pulling a wheeled device behind them, do not install six inch tile. Paul Blart has permanently destroyed any credibility of a security guard on a Segway. I'm sorry. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have... And it was a great time to tell stories about Grandpa Tom... Gosh. It's so frustrating. John Green, you lie. This is your airport. 
how do you handle this? Uh, 